Hey guys, it's Dave. This one was a totally new one on me, but I was doing a CMR, a comprehensive medication review with a patient who had this disease and wanted some information. It's called DISH disease, or D-I-S-H, which stands for diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. What actually happens is it's a systemic condition that's inflammatory in which you see calcifications in the soft tissues that are connected to the skeleton that actually then develop over time into ossifications where they harden like bone. They mainly occur on the spine, especially the right side of the spine. And scientists don't really know why it's on the right instead of the left. They think it's because of a protective um, feature when you're mainly dealing with going to the right side, but they're not for sure. It most commonly, like I said, is in the spine, but you can see it also in the shoulders, elbows, hips, knees, ankles, and it's really painful in the neck and in the heel. So you can see this actually in the heel, and where that becomes a problem is when you're putting your socks and shoes on, the, the shoes and socks will be tight. As you're walking, there's increased pressure not only on the skeletal function or features of the foot, but the muscles, the tendons, the nerves of the foot and lower leg as well. It is rarely seen in patients less than 50 years old. In the general population, it occurs in six to 12% of people. However, after the age of 50, that percentage jumps up. 25% of males after the age of 50 and 15% of females have this disease or at least a start of the disease. In a lot of people, you will not even realize you have it, especially if you develop it later in life. The older you get, the more prone you are gonna to be to having this disease. It kind of, with women, falls into this kind of thing of osteoporosis as well as men, but more commonly in women, but it is more common in men. But they have found out in post-mortem um, observation of skeletons that it is seen a lot more as we get older than people even realize. The good thing about that, like I said, is you may have it and never even realize that you did have it because luckily you weren't in any pain or anything like that. As far as symptoms, stiffness and pain are the main symptoms with that. You have a decreased range of motion in, your, in any of the joints that I mentioned, which really, you're not gonna see much of that in the ankle or the heel as much as the other areas. Uh, you will see an increase in pinched nerves. So more trips to the chiropractor or the masseuse might be a good, good idea for you, not as a cure, but to help treat that. If you get it in the neck and it's really severe, not only can you get pinched nerves, but you can develop hoarseness as the pressure occurs and pushes down on your vocal cords and your trachea. You can also develop difficulties in swallowing and sleep apnea. So that can be a major situation if you have it in the neck. As far as causes, there is a genetic mutation that can cause this. Not very common, but it is a potential. If you are obese, have high cholesterol, are a diabetic, you are going to be more prone to have this, as well as gout. If you have a history of gout, you can be more prone to have this. Like I said, it's an inflammatory condition. So if you have rheumatoid arthritis or any other form of arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, you may be more prone to having this. It's not considered an autoimmune disease, by the way, but having some of these autoimmune diseases will make you more prone to getting DISH. As far as what you can do to treat it, again, most people don't even realize they have it. I hope that that would be your case, but it does stiffen your joints and your neck and spine especially, making you more prone to fractures. So if you were to have a fracture or a break, your doctor may put you on calcium supplements to help with the healing process or a drug 
like alendronate, which is generic Fosamax. It's not recommended if you don't have a break or a fracture because you don't want to build up excess calcium when you've already got excess calcium. One of those unfortunate few that are below the age of 50 and if you're even younger, which is very rare, but if they have you on growth hormones, they will stop that because if you've been on growth hormones and you have a higher amount of growth factor in your system, it makes you more prone to the disease. Other than that, physical therapy is a good idea. If it becomes really severe, they can do surgery to remove some of the calcifications or to work with some of the nerves that are being pinched and pressure is being brought upon. Over-the-counter pain meds, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, will give you some relief. Remember, if you have heart issues or stomach issues, you want to limit the use of Ibuprofen or Aleve. They can also use other anti-inflammatory prescription medications like Celebrex, Celecoxib, to help out a little bit, or other NSAIDs. Again, if you're a heart uh, patient, you want to look at limiting those uses. Muscle relaxants uh, can also be used to help out with that. Occasionally, they may even try something like duloxetine or nortriptyline to help with the nerve pain. But there is, unfortunately, no cure for this disease.